Mais uma vez. Once again, we would like to ask everyone to take their seats. We're going to start the commemorative event of the six years of Codex Alimentarius, Fau and WHO. We'd like to ask you all to take your seats and keep your cell phones in silent mode. Before starting the first panel of this afternoon, we're going, we're going to have the opening uh, ceremony. In this opportunity, we'd like to acknowledge the presence of the fellow representative, Nilson Leitão, the president of Instituto Pensar Agropecuária, the um, Agricultural Livestock Institute. Also, we acknowledge the presence of the ambassadors of Barbados, Cuba, Morocco, Ireland, Mozambique, Panama, Syria, Trinidad and Tobago, Uruguay and Russia, as well as the diplomatic body present here and representatives of public agencies, associations, and members of civil society. Also, we'd like to acknowledge the presence of Mr. Havel Zavala, representative of the, uh, of the United Nations Organi uh, Organization for Food and Agriculture. Now we're going to hand the floor to Ambassador Maurice Uliri, Secretary of Economic and Financial Affairs of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for the welcoming words for the guests. We're talking about the 60 years of Codex Alimentarius in perspective, new challenges for Brazilian work. The Ambassador, Mr. Maurice Uliri, uh, is a member of this panel with Ms. Patricia Pagliari. The deputy director of the second director of agency of national surveillance on health, and Dr. Grass, representative of PAHO and WHO in Brazil, and Mr. Lornella, the president, executive president of the Brazilian Association of the Industry of uh, Food. So now we hand the floor to Mr. Mauricio Lidio, the ambassador Mauricio Lidio. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. Welcome to Rio Branco Institute for this event. It is an honor to receive you all here in our Diplomatic Academy of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. My initial thanks are naturally to two ambassadors, uh, who, uh, first Marcelo Leo, the president of FUNAI, who helped us organize this event, and Ambassador Glivania, the director of this institute. She helps to welcome all of us here. I'd like to, first of all, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of some of the speakers, not only the ones who will participate in the, in the first panel, but in the whole event. First, Mr. Jorge Antonio de Paz Cruz, General Board Coordinator of International um, Articulation of the National Institute of Metrology, and his work along with Codex is very special, so it's a very important uh, presence of uh, Imetro here, of the National Institute of Metrology. Also, the coordinator of the Commerce uh, Secretariat of the Ministry of Agriculture, uh, also, who was also a member of Codex. And as far as I know, the only Brazilian who occupied this um, a seat. Uh, uh, in the director of this co uh, of this commission, uh, my my dear colleague here, uh, director of the uh, Patricio Tagliari, Ms. Socorro Guelz, the representative of Paho in Brazil, Mr. João Gonçalves, the executive president of the Brazilian Association of the Industry of the Food Industry. Ms. Carlotta Aquino, the Executive Director of the Brazilian Institute of uh, Advocacy for Consumers. And I'd like to thank the foreign ambassadors and the colleagues of the different embassies who are present here. This event is naturally a celebration of a very important date, the 60 years of Codex Alimentarius, a, a vital uh, organism, the construction of multilateral uh, norms on food. In Brazil has a historical participation and like to single out two aspects of Brazilian politics and the national interest of Brazil in general. 
which are convalidated in the structure of codex, which are the fusion between decisions made in a multilateral form, and the multilateralism is, is a core element of uh, Brazilian uh, foreign affairs. These uh, discussions are part of an, uh, an inclusive debate in the countries that are represented, and also the basing in science, the norms that we practice, uh, having the goals that are based in concrete and scientific uh, information. So it's a very uh, happy uh, fusion between multilateralism and scientific um, basing, which uh, is the basis of this code, of codex. So it is a priority to acknowledge the importance and to celebrate the anniversary of 60 years of Codex Elementarius. The concern with the with food safety seems to be very technical, especially for consumers. But we need to remember, to always remember, that the harmlessness of food that we consume every day is guaranteed by the work of different professionals in different parts of supply chain around the world. Codex Alimentarius is a reference organism for this uh, key work. I said that the discussions may seem very technical for the consumers, but also for the diplomats, I would say it uh, frankly. In 2007, I was in the embassy in, in Beijing, and I would take care of commercial politics and also topics about um, sanitation and uh, food safety and the harmlessness of food. It was my third um, position in, in these uh, politics, and, and I was appointed to be the, the leader of a session, one of, of contaminants, another one of additives, and also the pesticide uh, residues. It was in 2007, and naturally I was there, I was present, but the help of the Brazilian technicians, the people who really understand other scientific matters, is really key. We, as diplomats, we try to guide the political matters and to be a protector for the instrumentalization of uh, scientific norms that are not uh, approved. But we know that the countries and the groups of countries, they use some uh, tactics in order to prevail certain agendas and some certain goals. So our goal is, is political, but it's complementary to the work of our scientists, academia members, and technicians, which is crucial for us to have a good um, joining between a politic articulation and the scientific and technical recommendation and, and um, a diplomat that is a consumer, like any other person, has difficulties to understand some things. And I faced these difficulties in 2007. It's been 16 years now. We're going to have a, a diverse group of speakers, government, consumers, academia, because the work in the technical uh, committees of Codex has uh, is important to everyone. So we, we're gathering people with different um, academic backgrounds, reinforce the exchange of ideas that helps to oxygenate the participation of Brazil and other countries in Codex Alimentarius. I'd like to reiterate my special thanks to uh, Inmetro, the National Institute of Metrology. So we share this participation and responsibility in uh, of Codex and guaranteeing a high level of technical and scientific uh, rigor. It is a model of the national construction in uh, highly complex technically uh, affairs. So I'd like to thank Imetro for the tireless support for the organization of this event in the person of Mr. Jorge Antonio. So we, we we are able to start the first panel. I already mentioned the speakers, the people who will, who will be in the panel. I'm going to to provide an initial presentation, and I'm going to hand the floor to them. For this first panel, it is important, first of all, to highlight which 
elements of world scenario that we are facing that can impact the resolutions of the codex. Well, first we have a uh, moment of the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. We have a growing awareness of climate change, uh, of the climate crisis. We can see an increased um, practice and awareness of the of climate change. We have seen a uh, food security crisis in the world and I will also say that several geopolitical crises in the international scenario and the multilateralism. So I think it is at least a complex um, situation for the multilateral negotiations and codex itself. And in the challenges that codex has to protect the health of consumers and guarantee for uh, trade practices. It is completely key in the discussions of codex. We know that the level of food is subjected to protectionist um, actions and it, it, we have the risk of some considerations that are not completely scientific and be used in, with um, protectionist uh, goals. So the works of codex have to be very uh, balanced uh, be being careful with health, but also not being um, participating in uh, discussions that can not be very scientific. So the reinforcing of multilateralism, of the multilateral joining and the work uh, based in science in different instances of codes, codex, is uh, proved to be very important. Concerning the interface between codex elementaries and the uh, barriers of commercial of international trade, there are different uh, aspects of the protectionism in the, in the area of food. We identified three of them in the in the commerce in, in the international international trade: the taxes, the import uh, taxes for industrial products, the rates of the, of these uh, taxes which limit the amount of the importation, of the importing of food. So depending on the quote, you can uh, have a waiver of uh, taxes. And we have the subsides concerning international commerce that need to have a better uh, regulation. So to, we've been talking about the barriers that happen due to different uh, taxes that are applied. Other barriers for the trade of food are the technical barriers, and we are in, a, in an area that is closer to codex, and especially to this topic, the sanitary and phytosanitary uh, barriers. These barriers were disciplined in specific agreements. The agreement of the sanitary barriers gave autonomy to the countries to have uh, adequate levels of protection in, in the least uh, harmful possible uh, way for international trade. To protect international trade, the, uh, the World Trade Organization had an, uh, uh, an agreement of SPS for human health, and it is important. Uh, to understand the relevance of codex for us. Although there were different norms uh, uh, legit, they impact significantly the global uh, food trade. They're not mandatory, but I would say that they have a degree of respectability enough so that we that could be adopted, uh, adopted as a standard, even by WTO. The standards are agreed are used to regulate food uh, additives, labeling, the maximum limits of pesticides, residues, and the members of Codex Elementaris, they have the knowledge, scientific knowledge, to guarantee the continuity and the stability of the rules agreed. Brazil highlights the importance of the committees with uh, FAO and WHO. Uh, committees that are made of m made by scientists of proved knowledge 
which is the, uh, the dilemma that we have to avoid. Political interests that are not scientific can impact in, in the negotiations of the norms of the code. The composition of these committees of uh, scientific support takes into account the diversity of the geographic representativeness providing space to science produced all over the world. So we have another aspect here, which is the tendency of some countries to think that science is a privilege of one country or another. The science is a, an universal asset that has to be practiced by all countries in the world. The hierarchy of values of science from one country and another is completely arbit arbitrary, actually. I would say that this scientific discussion has to be based in objective criteria and not in, in the difference of power between countries, naturally. Not, uh, not only reinforcing the primacy of the scientific uh, power, Brazil restates the relevant relevance of the works of Codex to combat uh, food uh, unsafety. It is something really key, and the president of Brazil has stated rapidly to have the fact of the um, situation in the world having around 750 million people being hungry in the world. And this is fundamental. And the guarantee of transparent standards on food based on the best scientists and science strengthens the food industry. And this generates a higher offer in food. Brazil was one of the main articulators of the declaration SPS in the last ministry meeting, UMC 12, that put in evidence the relation between need of guaranteeing harmlessness in food and the strengthening of food security globally. Another very important current challenge is the climate crisis and the concern with the environment, which is a very sensible and sensitive uh, subject. Sustainable development and environment are the priority of Brazil and of this government because of the historic protagonism of Brazil in the environmental forums and the efforts for reaching the SDGs. The concern of many developing countries is exactly this, to avoid that the inclusion of sustainability issues in technical manuals such as the codex would be a disvirtue. So we'll have more things to talk about them objectively. For example, how to combat the climate crisis without affecting the structures and standards that are derived from the codex. The protection of the environment cannot be a coverage for unilateral measures and unjustifiable procedures. Measures such as this can marginalize small producers, especially in the poorer countries, generating more instead of less environmental degradation. Because we believe in dialogue and science as a basis for discussion, Brazil is a participant of the committee that coordinates the Codex in the Latin America and Caribbean CCLAC, which is being led with excellency by Ecuador, who we would like to thank for their efforts. The importance of strengthening the dialogue between many regional groups is evidence, especially in the groups of the developing countries, especially because that's where we have to gather efforts to be able to participate better in the meetings of the Codex. The works done with the general committees are also to be highlighted. Brazil has many experts recognized in each of these committees. Here, the dialogue between the public and private sector is crucial to guarantee that the Brazilian positions are not unconnected to the difficulties of the markets which can be generated by badly created standards. In conclusion, I would reaffirm that the Codex is an organism that helps to keep the fire lit of multilateralism. It's one of the crucial parts of this as well, which are these multilateral elements, 
And this particularly is important in the moment that we are right now with the commercial barriers and protectionism. It's also clear that rules about the security and safety of food tend to be more well accepted than the unilateral measures because they have scientific basis on the contribution of the sciences of many different countries. And the dialogue and cooperation are the preferred pathway to bring us the legitimacy of the Codex. Brazil is proud to have given a contribution to the Codex in its 60 years of existence through a technical participation, which is a tradition of the Brazilian participation, and the defense of its structure and goals. Brazil has been a strong institutional partner of the Codex. The engagement of each member is crucial for the effectiveness of the Codex and so that its work keeps illustrating the benefits of multilateralism, especially in these times of crisis and uncertainties. Thank you very much. Now we will hear Ms. Pereira Ta Patricia Pereira Tallari, Deputy Director of the Second Board of the Brazilian Health Regulatory Agency. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. I would first like to acknowledge the Ambassador, João Dornelas. It's a pleasure to be here. I would like to thank, on behalf of Anvisa, the invitation. Sadly, our director is in the UK and he cannot be with us today, but it's a pleasure for me to represent the board of the Anvisa here. Personally, I had the opportunity to participate in an important part of the Codex elaboration in my life. I participated in meetings from many of the Codex Elementarius groups, and I cherish these memories because of the richness that it is to participate in this discussion because of the interaction between the different agencies that work with the regulatory issues in relation to food safety and also the impacts in the market, but also learning how to collect the experience of that this dialogue allows us to have. So National Aid was a great benefit to interact with my counterparts internationally. And this experience in the Codex had a strong impact in my professional life. And the Codex has as a mission to guarantee the safety and quality of food, the protection of human lives, but also with the zeal for the commercial practices. And this is the intersection between Anvisa, because Anvisa is looking for the protection of human life, but it also promotes the best commercial practices. So. It's a reality that's very of the codex, which does not regulate only foods, but also uh, medications, if we're talking about Anvisa and other products. The impacts that I would like to highlight of the codex elementarius that have to do with health. I realize that many countries measure and observe this positive impact in different ways be it for international commerce aspects or health aspects. And I particularly would like to highlight, in terms of global health, the positive impact that the Codex has presented for human health care. In the last few years, a couple of studies were published that seem very important to me, that bring evidence on the reduction of the incidence for foodborne diseases in low to medium income countries, and this I attributed to the Codex, and I attributed to the Codex. Also, contaminants, the own studies talking about the protection of the consumers, which is also based on many of the Codex elementarius practices that are being able to be replicated globally. And also labeling, create, making them more clear so that the consumers can take better informed decisions. In terms of health, global health care, I, I can say that it's a very expressive and significant qualities. And I would also like to highlight Anvisa because it's a very young institution. It's going to be 25 years old next month. And since its beginning, its acting has been very close and very sustained by the acting of the Codex. I imagine that 
if the visa was not engaged in the codex and Brazil was not engaged in the codex, I believe that the regulation of food in Brazil would be at a different stage than it is nowadays. So that's why we from Invisa are very happy and we share our efforts to participate in these discussions and to contribute internationally in these discussions as well. Even though they are recommendations, the results of the Codex Elementarius. The standards of the Codex are part of the regulatory basis of Anvisa, and that's why when it, well, they are adopted by Anvisa, they are mandatory on national territory. And in the pandemic, Anvisa has participated on average of 12 international meetings of the Codex with different delegation contributions with two or three people, depending on the subject. And for those of you who are not familiarized with the reality of the Codex Elementarius, it might seem like a lot of meetings for an agency that, as many know, has a limited number of employees and collaborators. But because we recognize the importance of the scientific weight that the acting of the Codex brings us, it shows that the contributions that are based on the Codex, the uh, agency puts a lot of effort in this participation, training its collaborators and stimulating a taking of position of the leadership every time it's possible. The guidelines approved by the Codex, in our perspective, allow an optimization of the efforts of Anvisa in the activities of control and regulation of food, allowing speedier analysis to guarantee the products to be commercialized in Brazil. This participation, as I was able to observe in my experience, we saw that the participation of Brazil in these forums, especially that had to do with Codex Elementarius, allow an inter-exchange between knowledge, men, knowledge between Brazil and the other members to better train our countries and our collaborators, which is something that, since a visa has not a lot of collaborators, has been a difficult part for us. And the agency is very thankful for the opportunity and for the reality in Brazil, to be able to have the committee of the Codex Elementarius in Brazil, coordinated by EMAT with the participation of many Brazilian agencies, representatives of the industry and the civil societies. From the, from the 15 technical groups, seven are coordinated by Anvisa, by the health sector. And I will list them now. The GT for contaminants and in food, for, con for additives, for labeling, for analysis and sampling analysis for oils and fats and others. As I said before, Anvisa benefits from the participation of the agents interested in this from the civil society together with the representation of the other public and private institutions. We recognize that this instance has a fundamental role to make this dialogue plural, democratic, and inclusive, expanding the legitimacy of the positions from Brazil to the Codex that are made into national regulations. When we're talking about the, the challenges from the perspective of Anvisa for the next few years, I put it into three categories. In the international context, I would like to cite the importance of the strengthening of the Codex Elementarius itself to guarantee that the Codex Elementarius has access to financial and human resources that is that allows it to reach its goal, especially because of the high demand in foods with different uh, applications from the food sector. I would also like to say that climate change wars and the pandemic and the increase of the global population require of the codex and the, f the safety authorities more efficient production chains. I would also like to cite a concern in relation to the science and the great value that it is to be a program that is based and sustained by science in times of crisis and doubts and fake news. Science has never shown itself to be as important as it does nowadays. So the Codex Elementarius has this 
intrinsic value that is very strong in its entire structure, and I believe that it's a direction that we have to follow and continue strengthening. So I understand that the issues in the acting of codex related to national preferences or particularities from regions should not fight for space with science itself. It's a reality that has to be dealt with specifically in the context of each country, but the Codex Alimentarius, in fact, has to seek for multilateralism representing the union of the scientific aspects that reverberate and represent globally the most relevant parts of the Codex. I would also like to recognize that the continuity of the form of the acting of codex can be challenged, like the production systems challenges that are having more problems uh, in related to healthcare. In this sense, Brazil's acting has to seek a higher interaction with different knowledge areas, articulating different positions in different institutions, seeking a synergy, but not duplicating efforts in different forums. Of course, the concern about the certain criteria to be adopted can create barriers to the market, especially here in Brazil, that have a clear vocation for export of food. In terms of additional challenges in an international sphere, I would like to s cite the need and the benefit that is to have more Brazilian and Latin American voices in uh, leading positions in the Codex. I remember when Gabriel Costa was the president of the committee, which made us very proud as a Brazilian to be able to see a Brazilian, a highly qualified Brazilian in a leadership position. And I aspire that these and other positions are taken up by Brazilian and Latin American representatives and representatives from developing countries in general. Regionally, I would like to highlight the challenge that, and also to talk about the participation of our colleagues from the developing countries to have more participation in the Codex Elementaries. And this is a second challenge. If these standards are approved, they also have to go through the process in each country and to be inserted into the regulatory systems of each country. For Brazil, I would like to say that even though we invest a lot of resources in the participation and system of the norms, we also have to wait and face the second process that is internal in the block that we participate in. It is an important opportunity to work nationally. We have the challenges of the participation of Codex in fostering the scientific production and submitted to Codex Elementarius as a support for decision making. We have been following the movement of the Brazilian Academia in in the process of their researches and the results presented. I understand that it, that there has been advances, but there is a relevant space to be supported in terms of building bridges so that we can articulate and provide some side, uh, scientific subsides to be appreciated and evaluated in the set of evidence and data that support the Codex Elementarius. So just to wrap up my, my presentation, I'd like to highlight the, present, the participation of the Foreign Affairs Ministry in the communication and interface of Brazil with organisms connected to other countries and international initiatives. I also like to highlight uh, in Metro, the National Institute of Meteorology and for, for its uh, contribution and the collaborative, harmonic and joint uh, collaboration of all the organizations in this topic. So it is important for all the Brazilian population and for the, the other countries. It's an important space, the Codex Alimentarius, that has to be continuously fed with more contributions to improve the country in different aspects. And lastly, I'd like to congratulate the efforts of all participations that are participating in the Brazilian Committee of Codex Alimentarius 
and acknowledging that there is always opportunities for advancement and improvement and understand that today we have a very uh, consistent participation for the country. Thank you very much. I would like to invite to hand, hand the floor to Dr. Soko Reguas, the representative of the Pan-American Health Organization in Brazil. Good afternoon to our ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to greet the Ambassador Mauricio Lirio, the Secretary of Economic and Financial Affairs of the Ministry of International Relations, my colleague Patricia Tagliari, the um, Deputy Director of, of Anvisa, the Brazilian Health Regulatory Agency. The Brazilian Health Regulatory Agency is, is an, an agency that for us in PAHO provides different standards, important standards, and, with a, and also contributes to the effort of PAHO to have re uh, regulatory agencies that could be strong in the national level. And this is uh, represented by Anvisa, and we expect that in this new assessment we're going to have to, to be able to acknowledge Anvisa as a standard regulatory agency. Because for us, in terms of the uh, regions of Americas, with different acknowledged authorities, to have a better health care and also to see the commercial possibilities, the trade possibilities in our region. So for us, not only health care, but also it is important to have the acknowledgement of the regulatory agencies to the regions. I also would like to greet Mr. Jean Dornel as the executive president of the Brazilian Association of the food industry, also my colleagues, the diplomats who are participating here in this event, in this celebration, and my dear colleague from FAO, Rafael Savala, who is here with us. And as we, we talk about Codex, it is in the end of the Secretariat now he is in the end of the Secretariat and sharing his knowledge with us. It, the topic today for us is uh, includes the two participations of PAHO and WHO, which are two institutions that are sister institutions, but they are different. I will talk a little bit about the region of the Americas, which is very relevant for us to have the presence of our region in this organization as part of our history as PAHO. PAHO has been created for 20, 120 years, and the creation of PAHO had to do with uh, trade and the health of people, but especially at that time, trade. And people ask why PAHO uh, talks about uh, full mouth disease. Why do we include this kind of study? Because we have, when we have the full mouth disease, we have other diseases related to that. So it, because it was a situation in a trade in the world, in, in the trade of food in the world. So this. Our participation at Codex is relevant to the whole world, but especially to the uh, Americas. Brazil has a very important participation in this, and I'd like to highlight the effort that Brazil has had to bring evidence, to bring consensus, and to bring people from different parts of the world that talk about development and many times we need to talk about of what trade is about a trade that can be fair with laws and regulations that can be clear rules that can be uh, in agreement to all of us 
the code is elementary rules are not the, are the norms and standards of codex. They are not mandatory, they are optative, but somehow they are the ones who make the market to have this continuous movement and with the approval of codex regarding certain um, types of food, the markets feel safe because they have evidence, uh, scientific evidence to protect the health of people and not to impose barriers in trade, but especially to our countries in our region. Our work as a health organization is also very relevant because we we see different challenges of the evidence that can be relevant and others not very relevant but that we don't understand that the, the norms the standards are important for the health of people in general and we see there's a division line and our dear ambassador uh, mentioned very well that the building of evidence is not only for the developed countries, but for all countries that have human talent in them. And I would like to talk about the first challenge that we considered that we have. The first challenge is the joint construction of evidence, the joint construction that will provide the best of what we have. And I'm specifically talking about our region, to have statements that can be uh, shared by all in terms of evidence and that allows us to evolve in, in the decisions that happen in multilateral environments. I represent a multilateral institution and we consider that multilateralism is very important when the countries have positions, chairs, as everyone else, the opportunity to bring to the table the evidence that they have and to be able to have consensus on what is best for the countries in this in the participation in this global world that we have. So this joint participation requires investments, investments that have to be shared as well so that we can have a work that, is, that takes place in the environment where we work of new products, of new ways of production. These are challenges that we're going to have and the evidence that we will need to have as well to work on them so that the products are safe for human consumption and also that will bring that will not bring uh, major restrictions to trade the next topic that is really relevant to us at PAHO are the platforms and the new architectures of global participation. When we talk about these architectures, we're talking about discussions that are being carried out. For example, now we have the pandemic and we discussed about it. And we said, why do we talk about the pandemic and Codex Elementarius? Because in this moment, there are many products, there are many other pandemics that have to do with products that are derived from animals and products that are commercial. And for example, in this moment, it is very relevant the work that is being carried out with the new situation of um, aviary influence. So of, these are different institutions of the feasibility of trade of products. There are challenges that we are going to face in these new architectures. In the new architectures, the representativeness of our developing countries is included, and it has to do with multilateralism that has to be fair. 
desafío. The, the next challenge that we have is a nova discussion the new discussion regarding health. Y para nos, la región de América, For the regions, una región the region of the Americas, which is a region in which we celebrate the aging of the populations, which means that we are still moving. We are the ones who are in the age group of the elderly. We celebrate that, but there is a relevant topic, the chronic diseases and also the risk factors. And one of these factors have to do with food. For our region, which is the most obese region in the world, it is especially important. Also, we see a change in the behavior of consumers. When there is a change in the consumers and their behavior, consumers that want more healthy products, that will be a set of discussions that will have to happen, we have to bring to be brought to the table so that we, are not we will not restrict the, the trade in our countries, but to outline opportunities to our industry. And this is where we see a challenge in our countries to bring the, com the trade of products to this new consumer that is growing very quickly in our countries. The people who look for more healthy organic products with uh, less pesticides, products that have a, a smaller content of processed um, or multi-processed um, manufacturing and have the tendency to demand more for products that are more healthy to their health. And this is a challenge, and it will be a challenge that our countries will have and to enter this market of healthy project products which aren't normally regulated by the con codex because they do not regulate or they regulate the amount of sodium that the products should have. But there is a new era of the products that are the healthy products. And this, for us in the region of the Americas, especially for us in the countries in development, does represent a challenge, which is the production that needs to be healthier for the people that will consume it and for the consumers that are demanding healthier products. This is something that I believe is very relevant in the agenda for our region as well. For our region, the other challenge is not smaller for the countries in the Americas region. It is to maintain our regulatory agencies updated with autonomy, with sufficient autonomy, stable human resources, with sufficient financing to guarantee that the products that enter the country are healthy for the population, but also so that what we were talking about and the discussion of the markets, our agencies, regulatory agencies, have to be international references. And we here in the Americas have a great challenge here, because when we have these regulatory agencies and we talk about autonomy, not every country has regulatory agencies that have this autonomy and these specificities that make it so that the trade of export is simpler because there is an agency that regulates, and that maintains, and recognizes. And when this 
is not part of the multilateral dialogue. There are usually some evidence that are not the same, and we have problems that happen in our institutions, and our institutions lost a lot of human resources, and the investment in human resources is something that we have with public servants which have diminished drastically in the last 20 years to the point where many of our institutions are the great fragility and the challenge for the future for our countries. So to conclude, my last challenge are the pandemics. And with the pandemics, we really need to have a different perspective. And during the pandemics, this was something that made us think about the future of the commercialization of food and it is related to closing the borders as well. And we said that trade has to be associated with the pandemic, but because we had closed borders in the pandemic of neighboring countries that act in a solidary manner, but in a pandemic, which is a moment where we know is not able to be contained through closed borders only, and commerce or trade has a very important impact. So it has to do with the codex as well, but also it's a challenge for us. So we as a multilateral organization and the World Health Organization, but especially as an organization from the countries in the Americas region, is to think that in the pandemic we do have to think that closing borders is not the best path to face a pandemic that affects global health, but also affect the economies in our countries. Thank you very much. Congratulations for the event. And thank you very much for allowing me to be here. Now we will hear Mr. João Dornelas, Executive President of the Brazilian Association of the Food Industry. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to thank the Ambassador Mauricio Dirio for this invitation, Mr. Ambassador. I would like to acknowledge all the authorities and ambassadors from the other nations and also acknowledge Dr. Socorro Gross and Ms. Patricia Pagliari who is here with us on this important panel. For us, and I will try to not tire you, but for us it's an honor to participate in the celebration of 60 years of the existence of Codex Elementarius, because the Codex has a very relevant role for the world production of food. Why is it so relevant? We already heard three people here with different perspectives and knowledge about global topics, but one that we have to talk about was something that the ambassador said that currently 670 million people face food security issues or insecurity issues. And the Codex is very relevant because it helps us to promote food security and safety while it creates standards and guidelines that are followed by the industry. In Brazil, I can say but, it, but this happens on, on the planet as well. But when we think about food safety, we have to think about safe food. And that is a topic that the industry is able to talk about following the guidelines that are put forth by Codex. Dr. Sokoho was talking about something that another representative from FAO was talking about, which is the 
food is not safe by itself. The industry makes this food safe. And we do this through the processing of food, which is millions of years old on this planet. The first processing was the cooking of meat. And this has been done over millions of years. For us, it's also important to say that the Codex has this capacity to create these standards that assure and guarantee the quality and safety of our food. Another point is very important that ABIA, the Brazilian Association of Food Sector, is also 60 years old now. We represent the food sector in Brazil, a sector that creates 230 billion tons of food a year, of which 72% is dedicated to the internal market in Brazil, and 28 is exported abroad. These 28%, we might even think that it's a small part, but they reach 190 countries around the world. So the Brazilian food industry has to follow the sanitation regulations of 190 countries of the world. This is not easy. This is only being done following the rules that the Codex proposes to us. They do not impose it for us, but we do follow them as if they were the standards so that and they can help us create our own regulations here in the country. They help us because these agencies are the ones that make the Brazilian food industry more competitive and safer. We can only be competitive because our food is safe. And with that, we are able to reach 190 countries around the world. The trajectory of the Brazilian food industry is connected with the Codex since the beginning. It has been our most important normative reference because of its global relevancy of the quality of the discussion and the products created since the 60s. When Brazil created the CCAB, the Codex on Ontario's Brazilian Commission, we have participated actively in the discussions and we have also participated in 19 task for forces that go beyond the CCAB. And this is not limited to any the local scenery. We are participating in regional and international commissions as part of the Brazilian delegation or through observatory delegations. And the quality of the work that was created by CCAB together with Anvisa and the Ministry of Agriculture and other Brazilian authorities dedicated to the Codex is a result of a highly professional environment that is transparent, transparent and based on science. This is fundamental to us. It was said here before, but it's worth it to reiterate. What the Codex does is based on science, and this helps us to be stronger if we follow these propositions that are put forth by the Codex. Codex has, in the last 60 years, been one of the main responsible ones to keep science as the main instrument for regulatory construction, which we deem to be extremely important since the main normative reference, not only for Brazil, but for the rest of the countries, is the Codex. And much more than a mechanism of harmonization of the food norm, uh, standards, it has a crucial role in food uh, safety, as I was saying before. I will come back to this topic later because the numbers are in very uh, high impact. We are here today celebrating the codex, which has to do with food, and we all work with food. We are connected through this world, but 700 million people that go to bed hungry each day should be a reason for us to be concerned and reflect and to, to seek the best practices possible for the production of safe food. I talk about safe food because, according to the WHO, every year 600 million people got sick because of diseases that are food-borne, because of badly hygienized food or not washed food. We have a great, we had a great case of bachelism in Sao Paulo after all these years because of a homemade pesto sauce. Of course, I have nothing against homemade food, but the 
Danger can be if someone tells you, well, you do this very well, why don't you commercialize it? And then this might be done without going through the regulations of Anvisa, and this can put the population in risk. And unfortunately, right after Brazil in this year, in Paris, another bachelorism situation appeared that impacted 15 people, a woman of 32 years old passed away, and a woman here in Brazil spent nine months entubed and using respirators because of botulism, because based on what the Codex has recommended to us, it's something that dominates the decade. So these foodborne diseases affect 600 million years every year. This is data from the WHO, and we can imagine this is almost 10% of the world population. It's one of the points that we have to worry about. And the other point that was brought up by Dr. Sokoho, which are the chronic illnesses that have to be a concern of all of us, the non-transmissible illnesses. And I would also like to say that the Brazilian food industry association has done a benchmarking of a voluntary qualification of the trans fats and we were able to reduce 300 tons of these fats and when a visa regulated and basically prohibited the trans fats in Brazil we were highly in favor of it and publicly in favor of it because this reduction that we were able to do allowed the Brazilian food industry to not use the trans fats nowadays and I'm talking about the Brazilian food industry and I don't only talk about the great industries there are 38,000 companies in Brazil creating food day and night, and 94% of them are small and medium-sized companies in Brazil. And these 38,000 companies allow us to import and export to 190 other countries. But through this voluntary deal, we were able to reduce the trans fats that were basically banned. We stopped using them. Sodium, we also could reduce it by 39,000 tons which we gradually reduced, and that's why it took a, a decade to do this deal, because we cannot reduce 50% of the sodium immediately, because if we do this immediately, the person at home, the consumer, would just ask for salt, so there would be no use. And even though we were able to reduce these numbers, which are very great numbers for us, Unfortunately, this means that a third of the sodium that Brazil consumes and a third of the sugars that Brazil consumes is the new reality. The rest is now used in at home. And so what happens nowadays is that we receive uh, a salad, for example, and we, before even trying it, we add salt to it. So this has to be a joint effort, not only from the industry, but all of us, to prevent and to work against the chronic non-transmissible diseases and also the other foodborne diseases that unfortunately impact so many people around the year. I was saying that the Codex has a key role in the production of food safety because as it establishes uh, international standards, it reduces the commercial barriers and promotes global commerce of food, which is essential to meet the demand of a population that will reach 10 billion people in 2050, according to the UN. And we talk a lot about sustainable food systems and resilient food systems. We talk about the system that can produce uh, food with traceability, transparency, combined with healthy life, sustainable life, and also with uh, accessibility. I'd like to bring the, the, the figures, Mr. Ambassador, because the Brazilian industry, uh, food industry represents practically 11% of national GDP. And we, when we say that we export to 190 uh, countries, I'm talking about industrialized products. I'm not I'm talking about grain or beef. I'm talking about industry, uh, products that went through industry. And 30% of what, what we have.
have from the industry is in our everyday life, like sugar, uh, rice, and all other things. It all goes through industry. It is a strong industry that works, uh, that uh, encompasses 38,000 uh, companies employing over 1 million people in Brazil, and that's not considering the whole uh, food chain. That's one fourth of the workers in Brazil. So one in every four uh, workers in Brazilian industry are part of the uh, food and drink industry. So we're talking about um, household uh, families, people who are responsible for households. So we are concerned about all these people, the people who will consume the food that is produced by the food and drink industry. To finish, I would like to say that the Codex has been able to provide valuable contributions to all the challenges faced by industry. It comprises um, um, a uh, basic uh, instrument to provide support to the Brazilian industry of food. The food uh, standards do not only save life, they promote life. Today, we are celebrating 60 years of Codex Alimentarius, 60, uh, 50 years of ABIA, the Brazilian Association of Industry, with this commitment to promote and save lives. So, I congratulate Codex. And I'm happy to say that right in front of Guilherme Costa. And please let me correct something. He was the first Latin American to be the president of Codex Alimentarius, a person that is, has always been based in silence, as Codex is. So for us, it is an honor. It is a reason for us to be proud. And I'd like to congratulate Codex. Thank you so much. Now we will finish the first panel of this afternoon. We will have a brief pause uh, for a coffee break. And we will go back here at 4.30 for the second part of the panel, 60 euros.